up, everyone? DJ Nubis with you on the Mail Tech Radio Podcast doing a movie review. 2022's Headless Horseman. If you saw my trailer reaction not too long ago, the film was directed and written by Jose Prendez, also known as Master Chaos. Uh, the runtime of this film is one hour, 24 minutes. I have to say, I really enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun with this film. Uh... I'm going to get to some of the finer points. I'm not going to give away too many spoilers if I can help it. Uh, the movie's still pretty new, so I'm going to try not to give away too much in the film. Synopsis is, when seconds from death, a nearly decapitated and desperate man makes a deal with the devil to protect the love of his life and seek revenge on the drug dealer who almost murdered him. Sounds almost like the crow. <laughs> but not even close. Um... The movie stars, and I, I hope I don't butcher this poor guy's name, and Nick uh, Caruso plays Brandon. I hope that's pronounced okay. Amanda Jones is Sophia. Ethan Daniel Corbett is Angel. Michael Paré, the devil, uh, he plays the devil in this. He's uh, For those that don't know him, he was also a guy that played in Bad Moon and Streets of Fire. Kate Hodge plays Mora. Uh, she's Angel's lawyer. And Angel is, of course, the drug dealer I was talking about. Uh, she's most notably known for, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface, as well as the She-Wolf series on TV. Sean Whalen is Fleck. He's the drug pusher and one of the right-hand men of Angels. He was most notably known for his role in Ferris Bueller. Uh, then we have Frankie Pozos, who plays Jose. He's a henchman in this. And, of course, Preston Downey as Maxwell. Another henchman in this. He's also AK known as that fat samurai guy. Um, first thing off of this movie here is you have the opening sequence where we see uh, Angel chasing down somebody uh, with one of his other henchmen. Uh, and then, like, I, was, I really noticed this about uh, Jose's directing and, and, and shots is that once Angel has dispatched this individual, the camera angle comes up from basically where the feet are and is looking up and it's just a fucking lovely shot, like a beautiful shot. Cinematography is awesome. And the, lo the locale of this uh, movie is very shot well. You got a lot of nice scenery. Uh, I'm assuming it's all in, in California somewhere where they're at, where they're all home with that there. And uh, the scenes are just great. Uh, shot well, clean, looks good. Um, the other thing is... <clears throat> Corbett's character of Angel, uh, and I don't know if this was intentional by Corbett or not, but his character kind of reminds me, the way that Corbett portrays him, reminds me a lot of the late actor Billy Drago, something that Drago would have played. Uh, I, I want to say right off the bat, it reminds me a little bit of his uh, character uh, from Untouchables, but not nearly like Drago's character, but just it, it's similar look and appeal. Uh, a little bit more uh, flippant, but I think I think even Drago's character is a little bit flippant in that film too. A little, lot, lot of arrogance and cockiness. Uh, so basically the film, we, we also get to see Brandon and Sophia, and they're a couple who you see like scenes early in the film where they're just, you know, as the credits roll and they're in love and you know he's proposing to her so they're engaged it's another one of those like crow type uh nods i guess you would say and then and in, in, in all the mind meanwhile angel who's a former boyfriend of sophia's is actually looking for her so then we come to a point in the film where brandon is confronted uh well actually it's sophia's confronted first uh, by Angel and his henchmen, and Brandon's there, and they get into a scuffle, and then eventually Brandon is killed. Uh, so it's shortly after this, when he's dying, uh, that the devil shows up and is saying, look, you called for me, I'm here, I can help you, this is what I want, so he's going to grant Brandon revenge, but it's going to come to the cost of getting souls for him. And one of the things that uh, is used for Brandon in this case to become the horseman 
is uh, what I call the Power Glove of Love. And uh, it's got these blades on it. It looks a lot like the Predator blades that he uses. Uh, then he can also have the power to wield, basically, or create, out of anger, this pumpkin that turns you know, on fire, becomes fire. So he can use fire. He uses, like, some sort of, with the glove, it's it's sort of like, it's not just, like, the, the knives part. It has, like, ability to shoot, like, lightning or some sort of energy blast and, like, incinerate anybody that he shoots it at. Um... The CGI effects are pretty much what you would expect from this film. Um, but I have to be honest, the acting really makes it feel like, it doesn't make it feel like a low budget film at all. Like the acting is really superb. Uh, you know, the, the main characters, the lovebirds, are a little bit rough around the edges. Um, don't know how much work they've had, but they, it's, it's very, they're passable. They do a pretty good job with it, but they're probably the weaker part of this. But, you know, I don't know. How much work they have, but either way, it was they still made it believable. I still enjoyed the the couple and whatnot. Um, probably the the highlight of the movie for me, and certainly a, a bit of a bias here because I'm a regular with uh, on Fat Samurai Guy's channel, and I'm a friend of his and whatnot. So I was really excited for him. Uh, is there's a moment where Samurai, a.k.a. Maxwell, gets punked by Sophie on her escape attempt. So she basically, like, knocks his ass out. <laughs> Which, if you've seen Samurai, you know that's just not happening. <laughs> this dude's a big guy. Um, so, anyway, as Brandon goes and he's trying to exact revenge here, He's kind of going through some of the lower level henchmen uh, to get to Angel and, and find where Angel is. Angel's got plans to send Sophia to Mexico uh, as part of like a slave trade or some shit. I don't know. But um, eventually, Angel catches on because Fleck comes back for his phone and sees that Brandon's still alive and then tries to tell Angel, like, yeah, man, he sold his soul to the devil. He He's back. He's going to come kill everybody, dude. Uh, Angel doesn't really believe it at first, but, you know, eventually comes to terms with understanding that, yeah, okay, this dude's coming back to kill everybody, including him. Uh, so he, uh, they they kind of heed this, this, you know, or at least should say they come up with these ideas like how to stop Brandon from exacting his revenge. And they figure, well, he's part of hell. So maybe we should have some sort of like holy ground or whatever to try to stop him. This is kind of reminiscent of Ghost Rider a little bit here. Uh, it's sort of a, like you can't walk on holy ground. But what Angel does is he gets like holy water and has it put around out, out in the middle of the street somewhere. I don't even know exactly where they were. But uh, eventually a priest shows up by gunpoint from Fleck and he's like, made the power of Christ compel you type shit. You know, he's throwing the holy water at uh, Brandon, which obviously affects Brandon in some way. Um, I won't go into more details there with that just because I don't want to give away too much. But uh, I did find something interesting towards the end of the film that I hadn't really noticed when I first started watching it. And I don't know if Prendes was doing this on purpose or not. So maybe if he, he can enlighten me a little bit uh, in the comments, if he watches this about what, if that was like his kind of intention of it, there's a, there's a sense of role reversal with the names. Uh, so you have Angel, who's the drug dealer, but he is, you know, basically grade A asshole. You know, he, he tries to show like affection for Sophia, but you know, you know, that underneath it, it's like, I just want you as my property. But Angel is just not a very good dude, but he has his name of Angel. Meanwhile, we have Paré as the, the, the devil. And sure, the devil wants his souls, and the amount of souls that he wants is is pretty, uh, you know, legit for the devil. It's every time we've seen movies or characters representing the devil, that's generally what it's all about. But there also seems to be like... A, a rational or sympathetic vibe about the devil. Like he, he tries to understand the love between Brandon and Sophia. So he, he's like, wow, you know, you guys continue to 
surprise me with your love and like i just don't understand it all you need to be selfish and but he, he's always he's not very cold hearted in the sense that like he's willing to work with either one of them to have them achieve their goal plus his so you know the deal makes the devil makes the deals basically but being the devil you would think that he'd be worse than angel but it's kind of the opposite so i don't know if that was uh Master Chaos's goal of doing the, the names and a role reversal a little bit there. So it was kind of a neat and nice little approach to the characters. I thought that was cool. Uh, when you watch this, there's no doubt that there's going to be nods to movies like Ghost Rider, Predator, Sleepy Hollow, and even The Wraith. Like, there's a lot of different things going on here in terms of like the overall feel and the premise and how it's shown to you and, and uh, presented to you in that way, which is really, really cool because I love a lot of those films. So uh, I really like that they did that with this film. Soundtrack is decent, uh, works well with the film. Um, I, you know, I thought it was nice. It, it wasn't off key. You know, it, it worked with everything they were trying to do. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to give away any endings here. I uh, don't want to ruin it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, but I, I would say that the film is definitely worth watching. Um, I saw that it's both on Vudu and Redbox, but if you do Vudu, it's much cheaper to go that route. It's only like two or three bucks uh, to rent it, um, but it's worth it. I, I really like this film. I might, if it, I think Jose said it was going to be a. Uh, for DVD, so I might have to buy it. Uh, but yeah, really good film. I enjoyed it. Uh, the acting is really good in it. Uh, really kind of taken nicely surprised by uh, Corbett's portrayal and the acting. I, I don't think I've ever seen him in anything else, so I was really impressed by his acting. Uh, the other three, the, ma the major names, I've always loved Kate Hodge. Uh, love her to death from Rapid Fire. Uh, so I just, she plays Angel's Lord. She does have some moments in there of, uh, where she's kind of funny. Uh, I did have some quotes that I really liked in this film. And the first one, the first couple come from Fleck. Now this is when Brandon is first killed and Brandon doesn't die right away. So, <laughs> so Fleck, Fleck basically says, oh man, he's like a bullet sponge. And then another one is, you know, is, is Brandon still kind of like uh, trying to try to survive this, right? So then he's like, God, he's like a roach, just won't die. So those are some cool quotes from Fleck. Um, Angel has a few good ones too. He's like, when Brandon starts to uh, kind of raid his house or business or whatever it was at first, he turns to Mora and he's like, "Are you packing, Mora?" And then he goes when he's with this Sophia, you know, he's like, you know, he's trying to be like sentimental with her. And then when she's like, you know, you're full of shit and all this, he's like, I mean, I, I get it. I tried to kill you. I get it. You know, <laughs> and he tries to ramble on about why he, she should give him a second chance. Uh, and then he has one moment where uh, he has Sophia captive and Brandon is facing him. And then he tries to sort of uh, make it sound like he's not near as bad as Brandon. So he's like, you know, I'm the normal one. He, he has a pumpkin head. You know, he tries to rationalize uh, who's worse than who here. Um, a couple good quotes from the devil here. Uh, basically more towards the end of the film. Uh the devil turns to Brandon and he's like, you know, there's this deal being made or whatever. And he says, you know, look, just go name a park bench in her name or something, you know? And then the other one was like, uh, towards the end, he's like, you know, now let's go paint the town red. Check it out. Headless Horseman, 2022. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Have, have a ball with it. It's really, really good. So. It's Nubus approved. Ranking or rating I will give this 8 out of 10. Enjoy it. Check it out. And see you later.